in the name of the Father, the Son, of, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of the only God, Al-Ilah Al-Wahid, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have just watched uh, YouTube where a young woman, apparently an atheist, not a Christian, burns uh, pages of the New Testament, at least 10 or 12 of them. Well, number one, what would happen to her? And what would have happened to her and to the whole world if she had burned the Quran? Like Pastor Terry Jones. So, since Christianity and Christendom is non-violent, so many people take advantage of this non-violence, thinking, imagining that it's weakness. So, this was question, well, this was point number one. Second point. This has been put on an Islamic uh, website or YouTube where it is said that a Christian burns the Bible. Well, it's not a Christian. It's an atheist who does not believe in the Bible, but actually what she is burning is not the Bible, it's just the New Testament. Here is the, the original of the New Testament. Well, that person uh, perhaps never read books prior to the New Testament in order to know its value. But the third point, since it is an Islamic YouTube who put it, well, most of the things that she criticizes indirectly in the New Testament, well, apply also to Islam, apply also to the Quran. So I would ask my Muslim friends not to put this YouTube on their sites. Let's see uh, what she criticizes and what she, she claims that the New Testament, the New Covenant books, are against reason. They are, uh, let's say, let's see what, what she criticizes. Why is the most important question? Do, do you think, I am talking to her now, to that young woman, I'm not saying that young lady, because if she were a lady, she would never burn a book. It is an uncivilized uh, gesture, but let's drop that. Let's take St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 12, first verse. I ask you, by the mercy of God, to offer your bodies as a living, holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, this is your rational devotion. This is your rational cult. In Greek, tin logikin latrian imon. Logiki, logical. So here is St. Paul saying that in our Christian faith we address logic, we address the mind, we address, we address the intellect. For us Christians too, 
why is the most important question and here is Saint Augustine of whom probably uh, the young uh, woman burner perhaps never heard fides queres intellectum intellectus queres fidem faith looks for the mind and the mind the intellect looks for faith number two this is true because I said so well if you have this objection against the Bible the same objection applies to the Quran meaning that we believe in many things because God said them but it's not he said them and they are true because he said them but he said them because they are true and why do we trust God this we say in the act of faith we trust God because he does not cheat and he cannot be cheated he does not fool and cannot be fooled now labels divide us yes but what does the New Testament say he said that Jesus has delivered us from these labels Jesus says in Matthew 23 all of you are brothers Jesus asked us in Matthew Matthew 6 to say to God our father meaning that all of us are equally children of God the letter to the Galatians chapter 3 verses 20, uh, 26 and following says who you who all who have been baptized christened in Christ you have endowed Christ so there is no difference not any difference anymore between Jew and Greek between slave and free between male and female hope well perhaps the young person I'm talking about does not believe in hope but we as Christians believe in hope and in Arabic may I quote my mother's tongue we say how narrow life would be without the space of hope in French we say that Hope is the last to die. L'espérance est la dernière à mourir. Hope gives such a strength and despair destroys. Let's look at Judas. He was in despair. He had no hope. And so he killed himself. Peter denied Christ, but he still had hope and the letter to the Romans says that hope does not disappoint the believer why because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us Romans 5 5 in other words people like like this uh, young person are free not to have hope but we have hope not only in the different and various and difficult circumstances of our lives but we believe we hope in the hereafter in the life after death action is the only responsible measure to take well this is not what the new covenant what the New Testament says the New Testament says that action should be actually the let's say uh, should be the practice of 
faith, love, hope, and of course of reason. So not just action without faith, action without love, action without reason, action without hope. Let us see Galatians uh, 5, 6. I hope my memory is not, uh, is not too bad. Uh, Galatians, yes, the letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 6, where St. Paul says that now it's not important to be circumcised or not, what is important now is love acting through uh, its faith acting through love. I'm sorry to make you wait. Uh, this is the letters to the Corinthians and here is the letter to the Galatians. Let's see chapter 5, verse 6, or so. Chapter 6, verse 5. Yes, it's. Well, it should be somewhere there, unfortunately. I, I do not see well uh, the text. Oh, yeah, here, here it is. What is important? Five six. Ala pistis the agap the agapis What is important is not being circumcised or not, well, because this does not apply to to females anyway. Sorry, but faith working through love, compassion. Compassion is always a virtue, of course. But compassion never ever means to approve evil. For instance, I feel sorry because this man did a mistake. But it never means approval and compassion never ever means to go against justice. A criminal has to be punished. We should not have compassion in the sense of condoning crimes. We are the ones who created life. This is what the, that young woman says. I'm sorry to say that young woman. No, let's say that person says. Well, here she does not go against Christianity alone. She does not go against the New Testament. She goes also against the Quran. She goes against the Old Testament. God created us. Let's read Genesis 1 1. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et At the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, in the Quran, you read at least twice about God, the best of creators. Ahsan khaliqin. So, God is the creator. Now, she says we, we want life and we want to live it at its fullest. Dear young person, are you copying the gospel? Now you are quoting the gospel, actually. Quoting Jesus, who said, I came, meaning to the world, so that they may have life, and that they may have life in abundance, that, may have, that they may have life in full. John 10.10, 10. John 10.10. 10. Love, love eliminates all borders. Well, what do you have against that? Of course, love is not enough when you are not mighty. But if we were to love all people equally as our sisters and brothers, as the New Testament says, if we consider as Jesus wants in the Good Samaritan parable, Luke 10, 25 and following, 
every single human being as our brother and sister, then there wouldn't be any borders. There would be less borders. So the problem does not come from Jesus, from the New Testament. It comes from, from might. It comes from interests, all against, against, the, against Jesus, against the New Testament, especially when might is right. Joy in the simplest things. Do you agree? Or you disagree? Well, Jesus, even as a child, used to find joy in the simplest things. We read about the family of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Jesus, Joseph, and Mary, or Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, that they were a happy family. Joseph was a carpenter. Jesus himself was a carpenter. And that was a happy family. Knowledge sets us free. Well, this is exactly, precisely, word to word what Jesus said. You didn't need to tear that page of John 8.52. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let me find it in the original Greek, which I would never burn, because it's such a masterpiece to those who understand Greek, and to those even who don't understand Greek, to those who appreciate so, eight, when Jesus says, love your enemies, is it bad? When he says in, uh, when he says to the first Pope, St. Peter, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you, you read this in Matthew 26, 52, whoever takes by the sword will perish by the sword. So we said, John 8, 52. Well, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, you have it somewhere. Unfortunately, I don't see one of the text. Now, knowledge sets us free. The ra race. Race is something dividing people. Yeah. But what does the New Testament say? The New Testament says exactly that Jesus has freed us from all barriers, from all differences between races, nations, and tongues. The letter to the Ephesians says that Jesus has, by being crucified, that in his crucified body, he destroyed the wall, the barrier, which was between the two, the Jews and the non-Jews. The young person said, we are proud to be animals. Well. I am really sorry, but if she is proud to be an animal, well, most of the human beings I know aren't. They are not proud to be animals, because being an animal uh, includes shameful things, shameful elements, which we all know. No need to talk about them. But we are proud to be reasonable animal, animals. Yes, we are proud of our reason, much less proud of, our, of the animal elements we have in us. When this person says that paralyzed paradise is in this world, she does not go only against the New Testament or the New Covenant. She goes also against the Quran. So, why do our brothers, the Muslims, put this on their YouTube? 
we think she thinks that life will continue on earth after the human beings will be all extinguished how can she know that since she will not be there since no single human being will be there how can she affirm that and then the creativity the creativity well to talk about creativity let's see what the Christian world has given to the universe and to the humanity as creativity. You will find that the maximum, the greatest proportion of inventions and discoveries come precisely from the Christian world and until the late uh, Middle Ages that actually these discoveries, these inventions, sciences, literature, uh, manuscripts, medicine, that all of them were inside the church, inside the monasteries, protected and financed, for instance, by the popes, in particular the Medici popes and the Medici families. Thank you for your attention.